Now, thank you for joining VaporWorks on our first YouTube video and today we're going to discuss a little bit about the Cadillac CTS V2 fuel module and how to replace the pumps within it uh, with aftermarket high flow pumps. But just a little bit of an overview of what this is. Uh, it's really kind of a disservice to call it just a fuel pump because it has so many other features in it that make it so much more. Uh, just from a terminology standpoint, uh, the hat, the outlet for the fuel, the plug for the electrical, uh, this bottom section, you, you, you hear it called a lot of different things, a reservoir, a swirl pot, a lot of different things, but basically this holds fuel, keeps the pump fully submerged, in this case pumps, fully submerged in fuel all the time. Uh, this nipple is in the OEM application, attached to a remote pickup so that it pulls fuel from portions of the tank that cannot be gravity fed. Uh, this is part of the jet pump system. So jet pump, venturi pump, suction pump, lots of different names for it. But basically high pressure fuel comes through this little tube, gets shot through a nozzle right here, and fuel from the tank is sucked into here and then pushed into the reservoir. Same thing here, we'll see it when we take it apart, but there's actually a nozzle section that's sucking fuel in through this port as well. Again, to keep this lower reservoir always overflowing with fuel. When this is running, there's actually fuel pouring out the top of it. Um, electrical leads coming off of here. Flexi hose that allows these preload uh, springs and down rods so they, when they move up and down, this whole hose actually flexes and moves inside of the module itself. So now that we've talked a little bit about this, um, let's, let's start taking it apart. But one of the, the most important things here, it may look a little bit odd, is this working surface. Very nice and puffy and soft, and we'll see why that's going to be uh, important because we've, we've replaced literally hundreds of uh, pumps in these modules. We've learned some tricks along the way, and hopefully it's uh, useful for you as well. But let's start with removing first this jet pump nozzle. So we're just going to pop this off of here with our fingers like this. We're going to remove it from this little clip like that, and we're just going to leave it. Next step, we're going to take out the two circlips, and we want to have a little, something to put parts in. So just press down, pull the circlip out, press down, pull the circlip out, take out these three white clips. One, two, opposite side is a third. It's going to pop up like that. Now we're not ready to take it apart yet. And I forgot to get out one of the most important tools. So let me pull that out of my bag of tricks. And that's these two tools. So this jet pump assembly, this is a manifold where high pressure fuel actually comes into this section in here through this tube downward, but it actually comes through this black tube. It's kind of hard to see. There's a black tube. But once we get it apart, you'll see. But this actually seats into a fish hook assembly that's down in here. So we got to pop it out of there. Uh, you'll see probably a lot of folks, they'll take a, a screwdriver and they'll start prying on this. And you'll, this, this section is very, very fragile. If you're not careful, it'll break. So we've made a slick little tool. This is just a piece of cable, small cable with the plastic coating on it like you'd use to be able to hang a picture in your house. It's a loop and it's got a, uh, an electrical crib connector just to hold that loop. And what we do is we just take it and we hook it underneath. We're gonna push it so it snaps underneath. We're gonna take a screwdriver, it has a blunt end on it. And this little bar, this little bar is just gonna help us spread the force out along the top. You wanna be careful that we do not block, there's a, you'll see there's a rec receiver groove here. We do not wanna block the receiver groove. So we just come in here like this and pop it's out take the cable off now it's ready to disassemble you want to be very careful when you take this apart lay it on its side slide it apart now just for reference remember we saw that fuel was shooting through here coming inside there's a little flapper valve deep down inside there's a flapper valve. 
and that's what allows fuel to go in. And then when it pump turns off, that flapper valve closes, keeps this full even with key off. Now, why, why so much padding? This small tube is high pressure fuel. Fuel comes up the pumps, goes into a manifold here at the top. This is the filter section. This is filtered fuel. This is filtered fuel. So this little hose feeds this manifold assembly. High pressure fuel out here shoots through this nozzle. Fuel comes this way, shoots through a nozzle. You can see the restriction as it comes through here. As that fuel, high pressure fuel, narrow stream goes through this nozzle, it creates suction, pulls fuel through here. This connects to this. So that's pulling fuel in, overflowing the module with fuel. So you wanna be very careful with this because if you break it, this is little eighth inch um, barb on this end, eighth inch barb on this end, very fragile. So you wanna be careful. That's why you want something padded to work on. So now we're gonna take it. Well, first let's take these plugs off. They only go in one way so you can't screw them up. We're going to flip it over, and again, you want to be careful not to damage that manifold assembly. Let's take off the springs, we'll set them aside. So here's the twin pumps, commonized filter. We're now going to remove those. First thing to do is this ground strap, just press in, then press up, get that out of the way. Move these wires up out of this retaining clip both here and on the top. So now you got these wires that are basically straight out. Now this white retainer clip has four prongs on it that hold, to, that hold the pumps to this manifold assembly. So we need to remove that. Just a simple flat bladed screwdriver working from one side to the other. Doesn't matter if you work left or right. Pry it up, see how it came up? That's what you want. Go to the next one, pry it up. See how it popped? Let it stay there. Next one, pop. Fourth one, hopefully my arm's not in the way. There, so all, now all that's released. We'll take the same screwdriver and we're just going to one, two, Take those out. Now it's all loose. Now what I like to use is, let's well, quite ready. Just use a little flat bladed screwdriver to pry in between the housing and the top of the pump. Pump will slide right out. Do the second one. You slide them out together. Reason being you slide them out together is because this filter connects both. You try to slide them out, they'll co get cocked and they won't come out right. So out comes the pump assembly. We want to take off these white spacers. Set them aside. Now you want a little hook tool to go inside and remove the O-rings. One. And two. Okay, now we're ready to put the new pumps in. I've taken the liberty of already doing the basic assembly of putting the filter on. That's pretty straightforward. Main thing we want to remember here is we've got to put this spacer back on. And if this spacer doesn't go on, it won't seal right. So we're going to put the spacer on both. We've got new O-rings for these AEM pumps. Doesn't want to come out. There we go. I'm gonna slide them on. Use a little bit of oil. Use motor oil, grease, anything like that will work. Mainly you just want to lubricate the O-ring so it'll slide in easily.
All you gotta do is eyeball it. You'll see it where the O-ring gets received. Line it up, and it'll snap in. If it doesn't snap in like that, you haven't removed the internal O-ring. Same thing, line it up. It's in. Next, we gotta put the wires back on. One, two, slide the clip back on. What I like to do is hold both pumps, grab the clip with both hands, make sure the wire, especially this ground strap, is sticking out. I've done that, a, I don't know how many times where I got it pinched in there. But just grab everything, snap it, it's in. Take your ground strap, bend the tab back up, snap it back in, bring your wires back into here, back in the top, back in. Okay, we're ready to go, it's almost ready to go slide it back in. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it back over. that back in, and put this back in, and then here on this manifold assembly, we're going to lubricate this O-ring. That'll make it much easier to put it back together. Okay, we're ready to slide it back together. So what we'll do, let's get some of these tools out of the way. So that padded surface helped keep that manifold from breaking off the little barbs. If you did on a hard surface, very good chance you'll break the barbs off. Okay. Okay, sorry we had some minor uh, technical difficulties with the camera equipment. Let's start over from this position. Uh, so this is the jet pump manifold assembly. Uh, it's going to be go back into its receiver hole here. Uh, this mechanical regulator, this mechanical pressure regulator, it's meant to be used as a safety valve. The pressure goes too high in the system. It just blows the uh, fuel out, out of this end back into the, uh, the, the reservoir section. Uh, it's not meant, this module is not meant to be driven full power all the time. It's meant to use pulse width modulation, basically a speed, uh, a system to control the speed of the pumps to match the targeted fuel pressure. Uh, trying to run these at full speed creates a tremendous amount of heat. Gasoline is the Lubricant and the coolant for the pumps. So running them full speed all the time creates excessive heat and leads to lower pump life. So let's start sliding all this back together. There's a lot of stuff to go back in all at the same time. Sometimes it's a little, little tricky to get it all to go, but it will go. Okay, let's get the springs lined up. Okay, make sure this hose goes in with the manifold assembly. Slide it in. It's looking good so far. Okay, let's get the clips, the white clips, mostly lined up. Make sure the pump, the Venturi pump assembly is kind of down. And now you want to start lining up the down rods and the springs into their receiver holes. There we go. I'll just kind of press it down gently, making sure that nothing gets pinched until you get one sticking through. Take a clip. Put it in place. Take your second clip. Snap it in. Now one, two, three. Those are all in. But now we got to get this this uh, Venturi manifold back in place. Jet pump manifold. Using that same blunt end. When I mean by blunt end, I actually ground the end of this uh, screwdriver so that it's not sharp. What we're going to do is we're going to push this back down. So we don't want to press on the top because you'll break it. So back here, just press against that, 
follow it down until you hit the, that flat spot section of it. Then you gotta get a little medieval with it. You gotta press hard. Okay, for some reason it does not want to go. But it's in, okay. Oftentimes that'll give a nice little snap when it comes in, but you see how right there, how there's about an eighth of an inch, not quite that much, it's down and in. So snap this back in, it's back together. We'll check that, that looks good. Everything snapped back together. Wires are laid out okay. Pump replacement complete. Thanks for uh, joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to help. Thanks.